All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touched. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Joanne Lane is suing Tamara Wong in the amount of $2,500. Ms. Lane claims her daughter was injured after being sprayed with a water gun at Ms. Wong's pool party and says the defendant should pay the medical bills. All rise. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Hatchet presiding. For your honor. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, Ms. Wong, you're being sued for $2,500 by Ms. Lane. And you're in court today with your daughter. Tell me what happened. I'm very upset right now, so excuse me. But I'm very upset. My daughter was at Ms. Wong's home for an annual party, and my daughter came home with, and this is my daughter Kelly, and she came home with her ear drum damaged. And I'm suing her for the medical bills that we have. So, why was your daughter at Ms. Wong's house? Her daughter and my daughter go to the same school. All right, and, and so Wong. you were invited to the pool party. And so, Ms. Wong, you hosted this party? Yes, Your At Honor. your house? Yes, Your Honor. And Kelly was there? Yes, she was. So, what do you know about the situation? What happened? Well, Your Honor, this is something that um, happens every year. We've got our children as being friends for many years, and she was invited to this party with ground rules that were set. It's an annual party pool party. There were rules. Everybody knew the rules. There are different games that were offered. You know, before I knew it, uh, Kelly was missing from the pool party because she removed herself from the pool area. Again, there were, you know, different games. And one of the rules was the reason we had it in the pool was because we didn't want anybody injured running on the concrete. Okay. So, Kelly, let's back up. You went to the party. Yes. And were you comfortable in going to the party? Did you want to um, go to the party? I wanted to go, but I was a little uncomfortable because Why? the entire class was there. Why? Are you shy and just... Yeah, you know, just a I little I can kind of tell that. <laughs> did you say that to your mom before she dropped you off? I did, but I still kind of wanted to go because my friends and stuff were there. Sounds like a fun thing. And so there were different games. And what happened with the Super Soaker game? I mean, did they have an option to get out of the pool or stay in the pool if I they wanted to play? I can answer that. I can answer that, Your Honor. Please. I made the ground rules for the children. I knew that, you know, they, they're going to be children that wants to play with the water guns and ones that doesn't want to. One of the rules was we're going to do this for five minutes. Whoever gets into the pool, understand that you're going to be participating. It is your own, you know, decision to enter the pool with the gun. And so they knew there were, you know, there, and there are also other adults that were there that day. That was, that, interestingly, because I was going to ask you that question. So other adults. Yes. And this wasn't a situation where everybody's just running wild. No. You had rules. We so, do. Kelly, when they were getting ready to do the water gun mm -hmm. piece, did you have the choice to get out of the pool? I did, but I played, and I, a couple of minutes later, I set down my gun. I just went to the shallow end because they were all in the deep end, but I didn't know if they were going to come over and shoot me in the ear. So somebody came and shot yes. water in your ear? Mm -hmm. He put it right up to my ear and shot me, but I didn't know who it was because he swam away so quickly. And I got out, cried, and called my mom. So why didn't you tell Miss Wong so she could have round up all the kids and said, who shot Kelly? Because she was already mad at me, because she'd scared me because I accidentally dropped one of her glass pieces. It was an accident because I'm really clumsy. And so she started screaming at me, and so I didn't really want to trouble her anymore. And she was also just kind of mad at me, so I didn't feel like she would do anything. Miss Wong. Okay, Your Honor. Come on. What uh, happened? This is coming from a 14-year-old. Uh, I can defend myself, and that is, you know, when she 
broke the I glass. Understand I understand that she's 14, but Your Honor, I'm sorry, but she's still a child. She still knows what's going on. But I was on. also reactionary as well, and I was not yelling this. at the child. Uh, I understand that we both were kind of shocked, and safety safety was first. So I immediately removed myself and Kelly from the shatter glass and everybody else around it. So I understand, you know, so it was a little know, bit. So, you listen, listen, listen. You know you're not supposed to have glass around the pool for just the reason you just said. She's feeling uncomfortable, and so you, after this happens and you are shot in the ear, what did you do? Um, I ran to the restroom and I called my mom to tell her what had happened, and then Miss Wong came and tried to, like, hit, knock on the door, but I told her just to go away because I was on the phone with my mom and I just, I was ready to leave. Wow, this seems very unfortunate. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. She was supposed to be watching all the children. You no, know, it was very well supervised. Like, she was never actually paying attention to any of us kids. She always had her back turned and she was talking to the other adults. And later... He impersonated me wearing my signature clown getup. Okay. And going around the city and scaring people. Closed captioning provided by... If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-888. 552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Joanne Lane, who is suing Tamara Wong for medical expenses. So you take your child to have her ear checked? Yes, um, we went to the urgent care, and then the urgent care referred, um, referred us to a specialist. Mm -hmm. And here I have the breakdown of the specialist. And Let the me fees. see that, please. Thank you. All right. Did you contact Ms. Wong to talk about this before you all ended up in my courtroom today? Yes, I did contact Ms. Wong, and she offered to pay $500. And if I didn't take the $500, she wasn't going to help with anything. So when she called you what, did you, what was your response? Uh, that was very unfair of her to have expected me to be responsible for the entire bill. You know, I, I did How's want to How's that unfair when I'm she's sorry. the host, it was at her house, mm -hmm. and she was supposed to be watching all the children. I think that's very fair. No, it was very well supervised, you and know, I did kept, offer she 500 She kept having her back turned. I'm, like, yeah, she was I, never actually paying attention to any of us kids. She always had her back turned, or she was talking to the other adults. I, I do have an, a piece of evidence, and as far as that. I'm concerned, yeah. the party that. was not what she's making it out to be. Again, did you have the practice. option to stay? Yes, I did, but I had to go take my son to a soccer practice, so I couldn't stay. Now, what am I looking at? You're looking at the pool party where it was supervised. Everybody was having a good time, and no one was injured. So, you know, for, for Mrs. Lane and Kelly to expect me to, you know, uh, be responsible for yeah, the entire your, bill. Your back was also turned and everyone was on their cell again, phones. That's no one were paying attention to the children at all. Well, you okay. aren't there. This Thank is you. from my daughter. Yes. Okay, she was always in the kitchen and never actually paying attention to any of us and all the other adults were on their phones. So, I mean, I understand that you were feeling uh, uneasy because you thought that Ms. Wong was mad at you. Yes. But if you had just said something immediately, we could have figured out what kid shot you in the ear. When she, we asked all of them and none of them wanted to come forward and say that they had did it. No, but I mean, right then, somebody could have said, listen. But if her back wasn't turned and she was actually paying attention, she would have saw. So she would have saw who would happen. Was there and who any did it? adult that saw this happen? In fairness, Timmy, no. I did check with Kelly, no. and she didn't want to share the injury with me. And so when I got the call from her mother... That was the first you heard about the water the first, being shot yes, in her ear? Yes, Your Honor. So yes, you never told Ms. Wong what happened when you came to pick up Kelly? No, I didn't. Why? Because we wanted to see how severe it was, because I didn't know if it was really that much of bad of a damage to her ear. And I was just ready to go. I was, I was just mad because I'd been shot, and... She had already been yelling at me, and I was just ready to go home. I'm concerned, Ms. Wong, that no adult saw this happen. We're not talking about just a regular water gun. We're yeah. talking about a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. And puts it to her ear, and no adult saw All that? Because they wasn't watching. I, did I ask you? 
Your Honor, in fairness to me and the rest of the adults that were there, I did talk to them and also talked to the children, and none of that story matched what they're, they're claiming today. So you're saying that this is all contrived, that, that these medical bills, what happened? I honestly think that in fairness to me and Mrs. Lane, that we should share the cost. And I offered $500. Oh, that's not sharing the cost. That's, they're far from sharing. Oh, good idea. Let's share the cost. All right. Well, I have not seen the bills. I don't think we should. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's do I that. Have not seen You're the right. Let's, let's let you see the bills. Mm -mm. Come on. And that's only half of it. Oh. Well, that's what you're suing for, so we're not talking about the other half today. <laughs> and I just wish that Kelly had said something to you immediately, which is why I'm not going to charge you the full $2,500. But I do think that it is very odd that no adult saw this happen um, and that she rushed out of the pool, went to the bathroom, called her mother. Now, you should have said something to Ms. Wong before you left the pool. You should have said something to her. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. My child says I'm injured. I'm going to ask some questions right then and there. Because it's not like she's bleeding. You've got to rush off to the emergency room. But there was enough time for you to have inquired. I'm not going to give you the full $2,500, but I am going to split this in half so that you will get a judgment of $1,250. Kelly, if something ever happens to you in a situation, you've got to find the closest adult and you've got to tell them immediately what happens so we can at least get to the bottom of this. Ms. Wong, if you're going to have children at your house for this annual party, you've got to make sure that all the adults are vigilant. All of the adults are vigilant because ultimately this is going to fall back on you. For the reasons I've stated, judgment for the plaintiff for $1,250. If there's anything further, if not, we will stand adjourned. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $1,250. The judge was right. This was a teaching lesson for me, but I'm glad that the judge recognized my daughter's injury. Kelly, I'm really sorry that you got hurt, but you both are welcome to come back and visit with us. Coming up. He impersonated me wearing my signature clown getup. Okay. And going around the city and scaring people. He's just trying to be a not good clown. He's trying to be a bad clown. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Dale Brunswick is suing Chester Doyle in the amount of $1,000. Mr. Brunswick claims he lost income after a fellow clown's creepy routine drove away his customers. Yo, you are suing Chester for $1,000 because you said that he absolutely ruined your opportunity to perform. Correct. So you all are both clowns, I understand. Correct. And you do that professionally? Yes. Yes? Yes. 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 All right, so Dale, t tell me what happened. The reason I got into the clowning profession was because while traveling with my family through Europe, I fell down, skinned my knee, and who was there to cheer me up but a clown? As I looked up, there was a smiling white face, red lipstick, he gave me a little flower, and he just cheered me up so much. From that moment on, I knew I wanted to be a clown and bring joy to people the same way that that clown brought to me. So my journey is a little different from uh, Dale's. I began um, being a clown, clowning around by evolving my two loves for what I do. I love horror, I love reading horror novels. I decided to incorporate horror or evil clowning by scaring people wearing a clown costume. Why is it necessary for you to, sh for you to sue Chester? He impersonated me oh. by wearing my signature clown getup okay. and going around the city and scaring people. Oh. I even have pictures. It was on the front page of the uh, newspaper where it showed uh, a scary clown dressed up very similar, almost exactly like I am. Instead of making people happy, bringing joy, maybe doing balloon animals, some he juggling. He was scaring the daylights. He was choosing people. to scare people and use the clown getup as a weapon. Coming up. He's drumming up all this scary imagery when it comes to clowns. The picture on the far right, he's just trying to be a not good clown. He's trying to be a bad clown, obviously. Oh my. Closed captioning provided by. 
You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Dale Brunswick, who is suing Chester Doyle for lost wages. So, do you have pictures? Correct. I want to yes. see this. I also have the lost wages that uh, Chester created um, due to this incident. Did not create this. So, on the left, you Town can see. Town in fear after clown sightings. So clearly you all live in a small town if this is on the front page. You could say it was a slow news day. Oh my. If you were gonna do this, why would you get a costume almost identical to Dale's to do this? Well, that's not his signature costume, just to let you know. He doesn't own a trademark on that costume or anything like that. But is that one he often wears? That's one he often wears, but it's also- It's the only it's, one I wear. So the reason I didn't wear the one I, that's when I was in clown school. If you take a look at uh, the one I'm in yellow, just to give you a little history, I met Dale in clown school where I had to leave, but it, I don't wear that because that, it brings in bad memories for me. Um, so I went to the costume shop and I bought a clown suit and the only one that they had in my size was that one. The only reason why that one gave me bad memories is because I was kicked out of the clown school. I can explain. What happened? Why did he get kicked out? I'm a director of a clown camp. I teach <sighs> classes. Uh, I do workshops. Instead of being that happy clown that we were teaching in class, he was choosing to smear his makeup and scare people, and ultimately that got him removed from class, and what I believe is causing him to seek revenge on me now. So I'm suing him for the lost wages and publicity that I'm losing because I was no longer allowed to perform at the state fair. He's drumming up all this scary imagery when it comes to clowns. You can see the picture on the far right. He's, you know, just trying to be a not good clown. He's trying to be a bad clown, obviously. But if you have had a reputation in this community and you've been a good clown, mm -hmm. how is his craziness all over town going to make you not have this performance at the county fair? I don't understand that. Well, I think what's happening is he's creating an issue for clowns in general. So I'm just suing him to make me whole and to get the revenue that he took from me, obviously in revenge. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Chester, maybe you are in the wrong business. Maybe you should be in the horror business. I think it is not credible that you told me you couldn't find any other clown costume except the one identical to his, and that you dressed up in the same costume that he has used, and you go out and scare people. I mean, that's just not okay. When I first thought about this, when I first heard about this case, I thought, well, come on, this is just craziness. How can he establish a claim for $1,000? Well, I think he has. And so because I think you have been injured in this situation, and because I think he's acted irresponsibly, I'm going to enter judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $1,000. If there's nothing further, we will stand adjourned. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $1,000. I hope you learned that clowning is more about joy than fear. Maybe I'm better suited for the horror industry. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.